Good morning. It's great to see everyone. Great to be here with uh, two tremendous leaders within the House Democratic Caucus, our Assistant Speaker, Catherine Clark, uh, and our great Vice Chair, Pete Aguilar. We had a wonderful caucus meeting earlier today. Uh, we are so thankful for the presence of two new members, Pat Ryan and Mary Patola, who are going to represent their districts incredibly well, fight for Alaska, fight for the people of the Hudson Valley, and continue to work with us to get things done for the American people. There's a big difference at this moment in time between Democrats and extreme MAGA Republicans. Democrats are getting big things done. Extreme MAGA Republicans are totally out of control. We continue to deliver for the American people. We got the American Rescue Plan done. Save the economy prevented us from falling into a recession, if not worse. Put shots in arms, money in pockets, kids back in school. Pass the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, creating millions of good paying jobs. To fix our crumbling bridges, roads, tunnels, airports, our sewage and water systems, mass transportation systems, ensure clean water in every community and high speed internet access. Then, of course, we pass gun safety legislation for the first time in 30 years that will save lives. Stood up for our veterans who served and sacrificed for this country with the passage of the PACT Act. And then we passed legislation, the Chips and Science Act, to bring domestic manufacturing jobs back home to middle America and throughout this country for the first time in decades, as opposed to jobs going in the other direction. And of course, finished it off with passage of the Inflation Reduction Act. The most dramatic effort to confront the climate crisis in the history of the world. To put our planet on a sustainable trajectory. Lower energy costs, strengthen the Affordable Care Act, lower health care costs, and drive down the high price of life-saving prescription drugs for millions of Americans. Democrats deliver for the people. Extreme MAGA Republicans are trying to take away your freedom, freedom to make your own reproductive health care decisions, take away Social Security and Medicare. They want to end it in five years. And apparently many of them want to take away our democracy. They don't believe in it anymore. Democrats put people over politics, lower costs, better paying jobs, safer communities. Extreme MAGA Republicans are totally out of control. That's the contrast. Vice Chair Pete Aguilar. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And as the chairman mentioned, we were uh, pleased to, to welcome two new members, uh, Mary Peltola and Pat Ryan uh, to the Democratic Caucus. So they received committee assignments as, as well in caucus. I uh, look forward to their uh, contributions. And uh, I joined my colleagues at the White House yesterday uh, to celebrate the uh, Inflation Reduction Act. As the chairman said, the largest investment in climate uh, that we have ever made. Uh, I was privileged as a lot of my colleagues were this last August to welcome members of the president's cabinet um, to my district. Uh, and I got to share with them firsthand uh, the impacts of the legislation, uh, the importance of the investments uh, in the part of Southern California where I represent, uh, where we uh, also have significant supply chain issues. So we talked about goods movement. We talked about the need for infrastructure, but we also talked about climate. Uh, for the first time in uh, nearly 25 years, uh, a hurricane, a tip of a hurricane got closer to Southern California than it's ever been. Those 
real-time investments uh, that we are going to need and that we require uh, are significant. And to be able to play a role uh, with this caucus in putting that piece of legislation on the president's desk to deliver it uh, is something that we are all uh, proud about. Uh, faced with oppositions among the special interests uh, that blocked it for decades, uh, we we're a party that believes in science and we're a party that believes in making those investments uh, for the benefit of the next generation. Uh, lowering costs, reducing uh, healthcare expenses, uh, that's what the Democratic Caucus stands for. Uh, ensuring that seniors have capped out-of-pocket uh, costs, um, that insulin uh, is no more than $35 uh, for individuals on Medicare and hopefully uh, for every American in the future. Uh, that's what we're standing, that's what we stand for. That's what we fight for each and every day. Uh, also uh, joined my colleagues as we kick off Hispanic Heritage Month, mindful that especially when we talk about climate, communities of color are often disproportionately uh, impacted, making sure as the Biden administration knows uh, to ensure that uh, we deliver uh, benefits to those communities, investments in those communities uh, is something that we are all uh, behind and something that we continue to see as a priority. House Democrats are stepping up to solve these issues while extreme MAGA Republicans, as the chairman said, uh, continue uh, to throw out conspiracy theories uh, and uh, seek to block uh, all of these pieces of legislation. Uh, with that, I'll introduce Assistant Speaker Catherine Clark. Thank you so much and good morning. I am thrilled to be here. I thank the chairman and vice chairman for inviting me back. And we, I want to echo their welcome to our new members, Congresswoman Mary Patola and Congressman Pat Ryan. Mary is now the senior in the Alaska delegation. So we're very, very proud. And they are representative of how we are feeling. Democrats are stronger and more united in our fight for freedom. That's reproductive freedom, freedom to vote, freedom to marry who you love, and freedom to live without debt and with dignity. Meanwhile, MAGA Republicans have doubled down on their scorched earth campaign against women and families. They said they'd do it, and this week they followed through. Lindsey Graham introduced a nationwide abortion ban. The American people do not want politicians in their bedrooms and their doctor's offices. They do not want Lindsey Graham to make healthcare decisions for them. They want to make their own decisions. They want Washington to focus on lowering costs and creating great jobs and defending their rights, not taking them away. Democrats are listening to the American people and fulfilling our promise to protect, to protect democracy and deliver for every single American, no matter their zip code or income. In August, I heard from a constituent named Barry. His wife has cancer and their prescriptions were costing them three thousand dollars a month out of pocket three thousand dollars a month the ira that we celebrated at the white house just yesterday will mean those costs are capped at two thousand dollars a year i heard from a single mother in my district who was facing eviction but thanks to president biden's student loan forgiveness plan her debt will be canceled. She will be able to keep her apartment, make rent, and perhaps visit her family at the holidays for the first time in years. I also spoke to a father whose lifeline during the pandemic was the child tax credit. He's a single dad. It allowed him to buy the diapers and the necessities that his young daughter needed. And I have heard from countless women across my district and across this country who want to live in America where their children have as many rights and options as they grew up with. And they are terrified that they are losing that. They are also fighting back. These stories 
are what motivate us. They are the heart and soul of the Democratic Party and of the work we do. From abortion rights to prescription drug costs to the dramatic reduction in gas prices to green jobs, new roads and bridges, and delivering a results that make a real difference in American lives. This is and always will be our agenda, people over politics. Thanks so much. Assistant Speaker Catherine Clark and Vice Chair Pete Aguilar. Questions? Well, there are conversations that are underway right now within the Senate and within the four corners, House Republicans, House Democrats, Senate Republicans, Senate Democrats. We'll see what comes out of the Senate. Go back to this side. Good morning. If the Senate manages to pass the same-sex marriage bill, they're looking to amend <coughs> it to add in religious liberty protections. Is that something that you think House Democrats will support if they bring back? Would you want it to come back for a vote here? We'll have to see what bill comes out of the Senate, what language comes out of the Senate. But as Assistant Speaker Catherine Clark uh, indicated, the, the broader challenge is that we have extreme MAGA Republicans who are like peering into the bedrooms of the American people. And that is inconsistent with the freedom that is central to the United States. We're defending freedom, families, the flag. They are trying to undermine freedom, families, and the flag. Whatever comes out of the Senate, if it's bipartisan, of course, we'll take a very close look at, uh, but we're going to continue to advance freedom for the American people. Catherine? Second row. Um, so you mirrored some of the president's rhetoric on the mega Republican extremism. Um, you asked you know, many of your colleagues to name who, who among you guys are the threat, um, but many of them don't want to name them. So why is that the case? And can you, you know, tell me exactly who you see as a threat to democracy if, if you're throwing out that accusation and mirroring that? Extreme MAGA Republicans, it speaks for itself. I'll, I'll yield to Pete in terms of some of what we've seen, but it's extreme. If your top agenda is a nationwide ban on abortion, we're not making it up. Lindsey Graham just introduced the bill. And that bill would leave in place extreme bans that states have enacted all across the country and then undermine the freedom of women to make their own reproductive health care decisions in other states like California, New York, or the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and beyond. It would undermine it in Kansas, which just rejected the worldview of extreme MAGA Republicans. And Lindsey Graham and House Republicans could care less because that's their vision. Criminalize abortion care, impose a nationwide ban. That's extreme. It's actually extreme to want to end Social Security and Medicare. We're not making that up. Rick Scott told us when they take the majority in their view, that's the first thing they're going to try to do. We're not making this up. They've told us this is what they are going to do. And of course, we know they are extreme on our democracy. You know, I think the I think the chairman is absolutely right. You know, and the, the answer to your question is a lot of these members support these radical extreme policies that are out of step with where the American public is uh, on women's reproductive health on women's access to abortion, uh, on gun safety, uh, these extreme Republicans not just vote against it, they speak against it, they create obstacles you know, in committee. Uh, these are pieces of legislation that have the support of an overwhelming percentage of Americans, let alone the individuals who supported um, uh, the, the ideas that the 
insurrection has had about disrupting, uh, about delaying uh, the January 6th proceedings. So individuals that carry those positions, and keep in mind, the American public is, is focused on this, uh, protecting democracy, uh, standing up for women's rights to make their own health decisions. Those are things that are out of step with the American public, and our colleagues need to be held accountable for their for their positions. Yeah, I, I think they name themselves with every single vote they take in the House of Representatives. If we just look at this summer, voting against common sense gun safety that can improve lives and make for safer communities. Then they went on and voted against protecting a woman's right to choose. These are extremely personal decisions that women make and should only make in the context of their lives, their faith, their medical needs, not with what the congressman from their district thinks they should do. But look at that vote. Look at their vote on protecting birth control. Look at their vote where the majority of Republicans rejected marriage equality. Reaching in and saying, your marriage, we don't consider that valid. We're not going to vote to protect it. The message is clear to the American people. And they've gone on. We just had the president into Boston to celebrate an investment at Logan Airport part of the infrastructure bill. And there were 13 votes on the House Republicans to support your bill. 13 to support good paying jobs, to address climate change, to create broadband access for everyone, to get lead pipes out of our water. What are we talking about when the priority is criminalizing women seeking health care? and their doctors who may provide it, when we have patients being told in Texas, when you miscarry and you need abortion care to remain safe, that you have to go home and wait till you spike a fever and infection sets in because doctors are afraid of what might happen to them if they give you the treatment they need. These are extremely dangerous times and MAGA Republicans are seeding chaos, fear, and they know it and they are pursuing this agenda. They are telling us exactly what they're going to do and they're following through on it from privatizing and uh, putting up Social Security and Medicare for reauthorization to denying fundamental freedoms about how we make health care decisions. And we look at a chance to vote, to help people pay those bills around reducing the cost of prescription drugs, helping constituents like mine address those out-of-pocket costs. Zero support. This is what the American people are seeing and responding to. They are seeing their freedoms being eroded by MAGA Republicans and their votes here in the House and their promises on the campaign trail. And that is why we are feeling that we are making a connection with the American people. And they are seeing that this is about their voice in this House. This is about their voice in Congress because our democracy is on the line and families know around the country, they are of no interest to the Republican Party. I mean, this is just not rhetoric, it's reality. We could spend all day documenting how extreme they are, but a Latin phrase comes to mind, race ipsa loquitur, it speaks for itself. Is it important to bring up police finding bills before the election? We're going to continue to lean into creating safer communities. Uh, we have done that in a variety of different ways, including uh, making sure we address the gun uh, violence epidemic that we have in America with a strong first step in that direction. There are ongoing conversations in terms of how do we continue to strengthen the relationship between the police and the, and the community. Uh, and I expect that um, those conversations will bear fruit. We'll see. Uh, going back to the CR permitting debate, um, there are a lot of members of your caucus who are essentially you know, threatening to shut down the government because of their opposition to this. 
what is your message to them? And how, how does that sort of talk right before the midterms, do you think, affect your all's chances? Uh, we're going to continue to have family conversations as we've consistently done. Apparently, we weren't going to be able to pass the American Rescue Plan. We did it. We weren't going to be able to deal with infrastructure. We did it. There was a big discussion around whether we could get gun safety over the finish line. We did it. What's going to happen? Are you going to be able to get things together with the Competes Act and USICA? We did it, the Chips and Science Act. Well, seems like the whole effort to make a meaningful investment in climate change is going to fall apart. We did it, the Inflation Reduction Act. So pretty confident that we'll continue to have conversations with each other, articulate a variety of different perspectives, but at the end of the day, what we always do as House Democrats is arrive at the highest common denominator. There are a number of reports that House Democratic leadership is working on legislation to ban members of Congress uh, from trading stocks. I'm wondering if you're able to confirm if that's the case, speak at all to the scope of that, if it will include spouses, and should we expect the introduction of that legislation this month? Uh, that's an ongoing conversation. We have a member of the House uh, Administration Committee who's here. I have said that I support a stock ban uh, for members of Congress, and I look forward to seeing what legislation emerges from the committee. Chairwoman Zolofgren has uh, indicated that we uh, will take action. Um, uh, we'll, she'll share the details uh, when, uh, when it's introduced. Uh, I agree with the chairman in supporting uh, increased accountability and transparency uh, is something that uh, we all stand behind. Uh, making sure that we are held to the highest standard uh, is exactly what uh, the Democratic Caucus stands for. Um, but uh, uh, like a lot of these pieces of legislation, the details matter. And so I know that our colleagues are going to be interested in uh, those details, and uh, I'll leave it to uh, Chair Lofgren to, uh, to talk through them. Final question or two? Did you yeah, can I ask, to, just to follow up on it, there's a New York Times report out that during this Congress alone, perhaps up to one-fifth of members of Congress have conflict of interest in their um, portfolios and in their trading, just in this Congress alone. Um, so your reaction to that, is there an urgency to do stock trading if we're seeing up to, you know, more than 100 members of this Congress potentially trading stocks that are in a conflict of interest? Well, as... Uh, Vice Chair Aguilar indicated we take seriously the efforts around transparency and accountability uh, in terms of those who are entrusted with serving the public. And we are going to lead on this issue in the same way that we've led on a whole host of issues throughout the 117th Congress. And I think we all look forward to seeing the legislation that Chair Lofgren puts forward sometime soon as she has herself indicated. Thank you. Um, Democrats used to use the terminology safe, legal, and rare when it came to abortions, and now Republicans have sort of seized on the idea that Democrats support abortion up until the moment of birth. You know, isn't it misleading to say that Senator Graham's legislation is a nationwide abortion ban when really what it is is banning procedures after 15 weeks with some exceptions, like the case of the health of the mother or um, in cases of rape or incest? But uh, do what is the Democratic position on limits to abortion? Because even Graham's initial proposals for 20 weeks would have really put the United States on par with most European nations uh, that have limits on abortions after a certain period. I'm going to yield to Catherine Clark uh, on this issue. I'll simply say my position is Roe v. Wade, which the Republicans have fought hard to dismantle, making sure a woman has the freedom to make her own reproductive health care decisions a decision that should be between a woman and her doctor. But up until the moment of birth? A decision that should be between a woman and her doctor, and I support Roe v. Wade. 
let's look at, at how we got here. We have had a Supreme Court that overturned not just 50 years of precedent, but to my knowledge, we have often not proceeded as we should have, making gains in rights and building an inclusive uh, country. But we have never seen rights rolled back like this. And I think it's telling that we are seeing candidates, members of Congress, starting to scrub from their websites their comments, ab anti-abortion comments, because they understand what this means. We are saying politicians come in without knowing what a woman's experience is, what her medical condition is. We know who has abortions in this country. It's moms. It's women who already have children, but for whatever their circumstances are, can do not find they can have another child at this time. Women understand, the American people understand, is why you see results in states like Kansas, that this is gross government overreach in to their lives. So this conversation about how many weeks on demand is missing the point. The point is these decisions should be made between a woman, her family, her doctor, in accordance with her faith. And when we have these bans in, on states, we are denying access to fundamental health care. We are moving towards criminalizing, and we're already seeing women's health care decisions and the doctors that provide that care for them. So what we have is a collapse of access to healthcare, which is already strained in this country. And we're seeing MAGA Republicans and my colleagues across the aisle double down on this while trying now to downplay it because they see the reaction. People understand this is about healthcare, but this is about a fundamental freedom. And it's women of this country who are trying to be controlled and have their most intimate decision by a member of Congress or a state house member that they've never met, that knows nothing about them. And when those fundamental freedoms are eroded, the American people know what's at stake in these midterms. They know what is at stake for them. And that is why we are seeing these special elections. That is why we are seeing this demand why we are seeing women registering in record numbers. Everything is on the line in November for women and families in this country, from their economic viability, seeing those kitchen table issues, to their fundamental freedoms. We have an expression in Brooklyn when someone's trying to pet, play a shell game, it's you ain't slick. What is happening right now is that extreme MAGA Republicans, as Catherine has so eloquently laid out, are trying to play a shell game with the American people. Our position is very clear. We support Roe v. Wade. We support the Women's Health Protection Act. Read the bill, Republicans, if you're unclear on our position. We all voted for it. That's our position. But their position is a nationwide ban. Their position is to criminalize abortion care. Their position is government-mandated pregnancies. But they ain't slick. We are going to lay out their position and the contrast. Women's Health Protection Act. For all the reasons that Assistant Speaker Catherine Clark laid out. And they're running scared. Running scared because of Kansas? Running scared because of New York, running scared because of Alaska, where Sarah Palin went down to bitter defeat. They're running scared. They're not measuring the drapes anymore because the positions of extreme MAGA Republicans on the economy, on democracy, on reproductive freedom, on Social Security, on Medicare, on a whole host of issues has been exposed and the American people do not like what they see. 
thank you.